Good evening and a very warm welcome to Harper College Chapel at home, from our home to yours. Today is a very special day. It is Pentecost, or as some refer to it, it's the birthday of the church. So it's really great to have you here this evening to celebrate with us. And we've got some great things lined up tonight. Music-wise, we have Canticle by Assumption in the A, and our responses will once again be by Smith. The choir will be singing Gibbons Come Holy Ghost, and we have some artwork by Micah Haynes. Our speaker tonight is a good friend of mine. It's Claire, the chaplain from Christchurch. Claire, we look forward to hearing what you will be saying to us later. But first, and as we gather for worship, I'd like to introduce you to Sam. Sam will be answering our questions tonight about what normal looks like for him and what kind of normal he's looking forward to in the future. Sam is a physics tutor in Hartford College and he is also a good friend to us in chapel, being a member of the chapel committee and a very regular attender. Sam, great to see you. Good evening, Mia. My immediate thought is that I'm looking forward to getting back to my normal term time Sunday evening routine of going to Coral Avril Song in Chapel, followed by dinner in Hall and then make, marking my tutorial work for, for Monday. While the Chapel at Home initiative has been wonderful, it's not quite the same as the real thing. Um, this thought does remind me of all the times in the past when we've had dinner guests in college who were impressed by our candlelit formal dinner with everyone dressed up in academic gowns and they often remarked on how special Oxford is. What is normal to us was something special to them and now it seems uh, a little bit more special to me as well. I do love the uh, the quirkiness of life at Oxford with all of its abnormalities and I'm missing some of those uh, quirks at the moment. At the moment my life is more normal than usual in the sense that it's more conventionally domestic. I spend more time thinking about things like what am I going to prepare for dinner? When am I going to sweep my patio? Now I'm at home all of the time, I'm reminded of things that before I would have just ignored for weeks. I'm quite fortunate that my job is easy to do from home. Particle physicists are used to working remotely as we work in huge collaborations with people around the world. And I can continue writing computer code and uh, analysing data and discussing it with other researchers by video conference, just as I did before. Teaching, teaching has been a bit more difficult to adapt. I have to spend much more time preparing for tutorials, but it's good that we do have the technology that means I can still talk to students face to face. And it's good to see that they're still keeping up with the course and enjoying it. There are, of course, uh, dark sides to the, the current situation, as well as all of the, the people who have been directly affected by coronavirus. Um, I know people who are afraid of uh, and indeed are losing their jobs and this has exposed one of the ways in which uh, the university is very unfair that so many staff here are on precarious contracts and now with the university hiring freeze while some of us are safe uh, other staff are just being told your contract won't be renewed and they face redundancy with uh, no further discussion even when in some cases they've been here for over 15 years it's not fair and uh, sadly in some Oxford departments it has become normal to employ people this way and keep them on fixed term contracts indefinitely and I hope that in the future we'll be able to change this this normal. One part of my job that has changed completely is outreach and public engagement. Just before the lockdown started we were preparing for the Atom Science Festival in Abingdon and uh, Particle Physics Masterclass and these were then cancelled at the last minute after weeks of preparation. That was uh, that was very frustrating, but we now have an opportunity to do do things online and I've had a lot of fun learning how to produce and edit videos and I know I'm not alone. Everyone else in the university public engagement community is doing the same thing and we're keeping in touch by video and uh, working on projects together. So I hope this new approach will let us reach more people and also reach people from further away from Oxford than we uh, than we've reached with our past public events. We want to engage the wider world and tell them about the research that we're doing and why it's so exciting and important and something special. I'm, uh, I'm more used to being asked to talk about things like dark matter and particle accelerators than about what is normal. 
But of course, we also want to show the world that, you know, scientists and uh, Oxford academics are normal people. And, uh, and, the, and we want to show that studying at Oxford is not something that any student should feel isn't for people like them. That part of my job is, I guess, challenging the idea of what is normal. We want to show that the, the old ideas, things like the idea that it's not normal for girls to study physics or it's not normal for state school students to go to Oxford are wrong. We know there are, unfortunately, still some schools in some parts of the country where these ideas remain. And maybe by spending more time reaching out to greater distances, we can change things so different ideas become normal.
first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verses 19 to 21. When Pharaoh's horses, chariots and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them, but the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, a crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Here ends the second lesson.
Good evening, my name is Claire and I'm college chaplain here at Christchurch. Like you, we've been learning how to be an online community and today we held our Zoom chapel service outside here in the Master's Garden as today should have been our annual garden party. I don't know about you, but I'm really missing the physical presence of community at the moment and I'm longing to be able to gather together again. There's so much that I miss. Eating and drinking in hall is pretty high on my list, but I also miss students piling into my study for tea on a Thursday. And I'm even beginning to miss the hustle and bustle of tourists through Tom Quad, although not that much. But one of the things that I most miss that's taken me by surprise is singing together, standing side by side with others to sing hymns at Evensong, gathering in a circle on a Wednesday evening to sing Taze chants, listening to the choir sing the canticles on a Sunday evening. I really miss this. There have been discussions about when we might be able to gather together in churches and chapels to pray share communion and to take weddings. But what I really long for is to be able to sing together once again. It's been wonderful to see how churches and chapels like yours have adapted and have still continued to create music with virtual choirs, even though it's complicated and involves a serious amount of technical prowess. Choir directors, I salute you. This year, I set myself the challenge of writing a blog about 40 women a day from the Old Testament over the 40 days of Lent. It began because I realised how little I knew about their stories and because I was frustrated by how often the women's stories were overlooked. And I'd like to share with you the story of one of these women, a woman who was the first person, man or woman, to be described as a leader of worship in the Bible. And she was also one of the very few female prophets in scripture. Her name is Miriam. She was the sister of Moses and Aaron. And she lived at a time when the Jewish people were held captive in Egypt at the hands of a wicked Pharaoh who made them work as slaves. You might remember the story. Moses 
plucked up courage to ask Pharaoh to let my people go. And he was refused time and time again. And so plagues were sent upon the Egyptian oppressors, including plagues of frogs and locusts, gnats and boils. Eventually, Pharaoh was so frustrated, he forced the people to leave. And they had to do so in such a hurry, they didn't even have time to put yeast in their bread. They fled across the Red Sea with their, with their, oppressors, with their oppressors in pursuit of them and escaped through the parted waters of the sea and at last found themselves on the dry ground of the desert. They fled across the Red Sea with their oppressors in pursuit of them and escaped through the parted waters of the sea and at last found themselves on dry ground. And the first thing that they did when they reached freedom, they sang together. I quote, then Miriam the prophetess, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women followed her with tambourines and dancing. Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. I love that even though they had to leave their homes in a hurry, Miriam grabbed her tambourine. A friend of mine lived through the earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand, and she told me that she grabbed her trumpet when the buildings around her were collapsing. Perhaps she, like Miriam, knew that there would be a time when music was what was most needed to bring together an embattled and weary community. Music as a sign of hope, of defiance, of unity, of freedom. Miriam needed to be ready for that time and was prepared. Today is Pentecost, when we remember the birth of the Christian church, when we recall the disciples 2000 years ago, huddled in an upper room, having lost their leader, friend and guide. And when we remember the transformation that came when the Holy Spirit came upon them, filling them with joy, confidence and hope, giving them an ability to understand one another, restoring what had been lost. And one of the first things this early Christian community does is to pray and sing together. One of the songs that has touched me deeply through this pandemic period has been a musical version of a blessing given by Miriam's brother Moses to Aaron and to the newly liberated people. It's often known as the Aaronic blessing and it's very simple. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I've asked your chaplain to put a link on the chapel Facebook page for you to have a listen to. There's much that we miss in this time and we too might yearn for the freedoms we enjoyed before this odd time of being held captive by this virus. Miriam and the women sang and danced before they'd reached the promised land. They were still in the desert. And although they were no longer slaves, they were far from safety. But they sang and danced nonetheless, because they had hope. They knew that God had been with them in the past and would also be with them in their future. So let us be people of hope and make time to allow music to touch our souls and inspire us. Make time to sing. Oscar Wilde said, music is the art which is most nigh to tears and memory. And St. Augustine says, to sing is to pray twice. So sing along with the choir, in your rooms, in the bath or in a garden, 
Who cares what you look like or sound like? And we can take heart this Pentecost Sunday that God's Holy Spirit is with us today. We're apart, but we're united with one another in his love. And one day we will gather together in community to sing God's praises. And how wonderful that will be. And so I'll end by repeating that wonderful blessing over Aaron and over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. May we pray. Our response tonight is as follows. When I say, Holy Spirit of God, come, please respond with, refresh us and renew us. Holy Spirit of God, come, refresh us and renew us. Holy Spirit of God, moving in the deep of our creation, come into the depths of our lives, guide us and empower us. We ask your blessing upon the church that it may have courage to proclaim the good news and tell of your power. May the church be seen as spirit filled through its display of the gifts of the spirit. Guide us that each of us may use our gifts and talents to your glory and the benefit of each other. Holy Spirit of God, come, refresh us and renew us. Holy Spirit of God, giving life to dry bones, we ask your blessing upon all who feel threatened or have lost hope. We remember before you refugees, homeless and oppressed peoples. Give your strength to all who seek to bring liberty and justice. Guide the leaders of nations and all who are in positions of authority into the ways of peace. Holy Spirit of God, come. Refresh us and renew us. Holy Spirit of God, kindle the hearts without which you are dull and cold. Bless us in all our relationships. Strengthen our love for each other. Give joy to us as families and homes and in our dealings with one another. We pray for all who seek to restore broken relationships. Holy Spirit of God, come, refresh us and renew us. Holy Spirit of God, breath of life, we ask your blessing upon all who feel hindered or isolated through illness or disability. We remember those in constant pain and all who are finding life difficult. We pray for all who are despairing and depressed. Holy Spirit of God, come, refresh us and renew us. Holy Spirit of God, giver of life and life eternal, we rejoice in your renewing and restoring power. We ask your blessing upon our loved ones departed, that in you they may know the fullness of life and the joy of your presence. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>